Hello and welcome to TV30, another TV30, a production of the Government Information Service. My name is Jessie Léonce, Information Assistant at the Department of Sustainable Development. We have some wonderful news. The Cabinet of Ministers has endorsed the Marine Litter Management Action Plan. We call it the ML Map, the latest national effort to address pollution, more specifically marine litter. I am joined by uh, Mrs. Don Pierre Nathaniel, Chief Sustainable Development and Environment Officer, as well as consultant on the project, Mr. Bishnu Tulsi, to speak a little bit about the ML map and what it will mean for St. Lucia. Greetings. Thank you so much for being here. Thank okay. you so much for Wonderful. Having, having us. DPN, I want to start with you. Just tell us a little bit about, you know, essentially why an ML map. Why this national effort to address pollution? Um, we know for certain that we do have a, a problem dealing with um, marine litter and what have you, but why this coordinated effort? What hasn't worked before that needs to be efforted in this ML map now? Well, marine litter, plastic pollution, waste management remains a, a critical issue uh, that the world is facing, the region is facing, and certainly St. Lucia is facing. And we recognize that it is, it is affecting and has the ability to continue to affect just about or every sector in St. Lucia in one way or the other. We're an island, we depend on um, tourism um, as one of our mainstays. And uh, the, the whole looking at um, litter and, and waste, the two just do not go in sync and hand in hand. And it's a problem in terms of aesthetics. It's, in, it's a problem in terms of other aspects like biodiversity, conservation and ecosystem uses and all of, of these aspects as well. So it's not just an eyesore um, in terms of visitors and how it can affect us economically but it can affect us socially. We use the beaches, etc., the environment in terms of recreation, and it affects us as well environmentally as well. Wonderful. Mr. Tulsi, uh, we <laughs> have seen many a year of efforts to curb, to deal with, address a variety of actions, including cleanups and what have you. Um, just going through the, the validation engagements with stakeholders and, and what have you, speak to us about you know, what hasn't worked so far? What are some of the challenge areas that MLMAP, with its um, documentation and so on, implementation, will address? <clears throat> That's an interesting question. Um, the single biggest problem is that we do not dispose of our waste the way we should. Mm -hmm. um, if we can do that, then most of the problem is gone. Um, you mentioned cleanups. Yes, a lot of these have been happening, but they are not coordinated. They're not consistent, mm -hmm. and therefore the the effort is diluted. Um, producing the ML map focuses attention on specific areas of interventions, um, which stakeholders identify the, as the priority ones, and and that way we can get a, a, a more structured approach to managing waste. Um, I, I must say that St. Lucia, in, in the research I've done, St. Lucia has a, a really good waste management collection system. Um, the problem is that too much waste does not enter that system. It is leaked out of the mainstream collection system and, and they end up in the, in the environment, the, um, the rain to take them into rainwater, to take them into rivers and, and they end up in the sea and then all the problems don't spoke about. Mm -hmm. So this is really about creating a structure, a stru having a structured approach to dealing with a problem that except for the work of the Solid Waste Management Authority has been done in an uncoordinated way. Understood. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and just to, to add to that, um, Mr. Tulsi, um, in terms of looking at that structured approach, we recognize that there, there is more than one way to tackle the issue. And it, it is not simply using one, one method. And this is why the ML map or the Marine Litter Management Action Plan that we, sp we were speaking of has a, a number of pillars. There are five pillars specifically. Uh, there are pillars to deal with the policy and regulatory framework, looking at uh, pieces of legislation that we were still trying to push like our beverage containers bill or our marine pollution act etc 
and noticing that these are important in terms of the policy direction for the country where waste is concerned. Mm -hmm. But looking at our second pillar, uh, for example, that speaks specifically to waste minimization, mm -hmm. uh, aspects to do with just not reuse and recycling, but also segregation and composting. Our third pillar, the whole one that uh, under which we are looking at the, the cleanup uh, campaign plan, mm -hmm. um, just as it it indicates it's about cleanup campaign, something we still have to do because people are not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, the fourth pillar looks at um, partnerships and a lot of, and that is an important and fundamental part of the, of the plan in that we aren't able to do this alone as a government. It has to be the government and civil society and the private sector, the business organizations, the media, the individual persons, on the, the, the students, everyone, the youth working together on this issue. So for example, having been able to partner with entities such as Massey in the single use plastic bag. So partnerships, that's a very important component of the plan. And of course, awareness raising and behavioral change. A lot of what we do when we generate uh, infographics or we do um, campaigns and we have uh, public awareness where we do audio visuals, we have debates and we have exhibitions and all kinds of mannerisms to try to encourage people to do the right thing and to, be, and to want to do the right thing. So none of these pillars, um, as Mr. T, um, Mr. Tulsi was saying, none of them really uh, work alone. They have to work in tandem uh, with each other in order to be effective. And it requires a real collaborative e effort um, to get somewhere. That's okay. I said and DPN earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there has to be international cooperation as well. Because yes. Marine litter is really a transboundary problem. Yes, yeah. Yeah, sure. absolutely. We're going to delve a little bit more into the pillars in just a moment, but mm -hmm. I, I just want to under, get an understanding of how was the Department of Sustainable Development guided in approaching this situation, even before the ML map was fully developed? What was the vision? What was the plan going into this? And who, what, who were some of the persons that were engaged in some of the events that you've had so far? Deepia. Well, the Department of Sustainable Development has been involved in the whole drive where single-use plastics um, is concerned. So we have been pushing towards the phase-out of single-use plastics, a process with legislation um, that started, uh, I would say, in 2019 in terms of legislation, and incrementally adding it where first it was the ban on importation and moving towards use and sale, etc. so that in 2022, you have that effective ban in that, that, that is all-encompassing on certain single-use um, select plastics, uh, food beverage containers, stirrers and stores, etc. And, and now we see an environment where, of course, we don't see this, the styrofoam um, um, piles that we used to see before. So we're mm -hmm. seeing progress in that regard. But all of this um, was part of the process that um, and part of the package under our national oceans policy as well, mm -hmm. looking at that overarching guide as to how we want to advance as a country in terms of advancing the blue economy. And that in includes also having proper waste management actions in place. Mm -hmm. so, so this process with the development of the ML map, we worked with a number of agencies involved in waste management in some way or the other in the collection of waste. So we had a technical consultation where we brought them in to help us guide the process, to help us with the process in terms of uh, what our waste types were, what were the methods that existed right now, who was collecting waste, what data they had. And that helped us if our national source inventory that fed into the Marine Litter Management Action Plan that was developed. We also had a, a high-level segment that was led um, by our Minister for Sustainable Development, but also in collaboration with at least five other parliamentary representatives. And that was significant in terms of being able to get that buy-in that is needed for an issue that affects every single sector in St. Lucia, and being able to have them be part of the process for, for, for for coming up with the ideas of what those pillars should be and what those activities should be, and that was fundamental. We also had a, a broad-based consultation and seminar where we had the private sector civil society also contributing to this process towards the development of the ML map. We developed um, collaboratively a number of audiovisual pieces, a number of, we had a um, number of debates, we had panel discussions, and, and all of that to, to bring persons in in terms of understanding the situation before us and looking for ways to be able to solve this problem in a sustainable manner, in a coordinated manner compared to the 
what has happened in the past and what has looking at what has not worked mm -hmm. and seeing how we can improve upon it going forward. Thanks for that. Um, Mr. Tulsi, in the development of the NSI and the, the National Source Inventory and even the ML map uh, preparations as well, what information did you have in the research? What, what was coming forward? Um, was there a plethora of information, st statistics, data? There's been a lot of cleanups. There have been a lot of efforts throughout the years, not only in St. Lucia, but in all the islands to have, you know, to, to deal with this pollution problem. What were you coming into and what did you have to source out? Yeah, um, one of the challenges I faced was that um, the cleanup campaigns did not generate data. Um, persons would conduct the cleanup campaigns and, and dispose of the waste. Um, so there wasn't really any information on the type of waste that was being collected or where it was being collected. And that sort of created a challenge for the for putting the National Source Inventory together. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate in the, in the exercise because just prior to starting that, the IUCN had done a study on, on waste mm -hmm. um, in St. Lucia. And, and they, they used scientific methods to, to try and estimate the amount of waste that is being generated and the types of waste from the tourism, the, the domestic, commercial, and fishery sectors. Um, so that data was available. They were not accurate. Mm. Um, the pandemic uh, prevented them from doing the extensive field work that was planned. But they did do some waste, actual waste segregation, um, collecting waste from different, from different sources, mm -hmm. separating it, and, and um, um, to see what types of waste was there, was there and extrapolating that to the country level. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, um, a lot of work was done, especially by UNEP, um, but the Florida State University has done work as well, and IUCN has done work in, in estimating marine litter um, and coming up with strategies to address the problem. And in, in doing those reports, they also did some research into actual waste and, and, and used proxy data from other sources, other similar jurisdictions. Um, in a, and the third, the third source I was able to access was two waste segregation studies that was, were done by the Solid Waste Management Authority, mm -hmm. where they did waste segregation studies and were able to come up with, with, with actual percentages of the different types of waste. So the, the effort benefited from those studies and, and, and the data coming out of those studies were used to, to generate the information in the, in the, national, in the national source inventory. Um, the, 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 in a nutshell, the, the main findings were that um, the most of the waste comes from the domestic sector. I was about to ask. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and most of the leak, leakage into the environment mm. is from that sector mm. as well, um, followed by tourism and the commercial sectors. Uh, so that in the ML map, focus is placed on those areas. Um, in, in an effort to achieve the waste minimization and, uh, and, and, and um, the strategy sort of builds around those. Okay, thank you very much. We are speaking to the Deputy Chief Sustainable Development and Environment Officer as well as the consultant on the Marine Litter Management Action Plan recently endorsed by the Cabinet of Ministers. We're talking about its impact, uh, what we can look forward to and what is happening on the ground right now. Do stay tuned. You're watching TV30. The world's climate is changing and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly Intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate and the greenhouse
greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change. And everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Thank you so much for staying tuned. We continue with this episode of TV30, speaking on the Marine Litter Management Action Plan. Mrs. Nathaniel, speak to us a little bit about, you know, the endorsement by the Cabinet of Ministers. What does it enable in this effort to address marine pollution in St. Lucia? Very happy day for us <laughs> <laughs> when it was endorsed. Uh, but of course, uh, the process uh, started off in 2022. And uh, I, I think it was really good that, the, as I mentioned just now, that the cabinet, a number of members of cabinet were actually part of the process uh, when we were discussing the development, um, both of the National Source Inventory and the Marine Litter Management mm -hmm. Action Plan. So they're already aware of the elements. So it was more of a, of a, a natural transition towards endorsement. So we were able to submit Submit this uh, through our minister to the uh, to the cabinet of ministers at the end of the year, and by January. Uh, 2023, the beginning of the year, we already had that endorsement. And that is really significant because the, 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 the commitment, we actually got the commitment even prior to the actual endorsement through their presence and through the pro proclamations that they made during the actual sessions. And I think it's important in environmental matters, in any matter really, to have that kind of involvement of, of, your, of your policy makers uh, in terms of, of, of the way forward. And it will certainly help us in terms of um, implementation. So, so when, when we get uh, opportunities coming forward, our ministers are already clued in in terms of the, the pillars that can be supported through the particular funding opportunity that, that may come along. Wonderful. Um, and now that it's, it's building momentum, what next in terms of implementation? Implementation. Even before the endorsement um, of this um, plan, we were already liaising with partners such as IUCN that Mr. Tulsi mentioned earlier on. And they were able to in indicate their ability to support us with uh, two of the pillars. That is the um, pillar three in terms of cleanup campaigns and um, pillar five in terms of education awareness and behavioral change. So through their support, we were able to develop this uh, coastal cleanup campaign plan to take cleanups to another level recognizing that we, we do do cleanups, whether it be underwater cleanups like we did in 2020, uh, last year, 2022, mm -hmm. in terms of the international coastal cleanup, we participated in that. But to be able to take the cleanups, whether they be on underwater, roadside, drain, wherever it is, um, to be able to do it in a more coordinated manner um, and, and that is important in terms of the data collection aspect that Mr. Tulsi mentioned earlier on. Mm -hmm. Not just collecting and saying that you have uh, a certain quantity of waste, 10 pounds, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, but being able to segregate being able to itemize that waste in a manner that you know what types of waste you have, how much, what is in there that's plastic and, and aluminum or, or metal and, and paper and so on and so forth. But they're also helping us with the awareness aspect. We were able to develop so many different audiovisual materials and infographics that we need to be able to make sure that they get out there to the public in one way or the other, uh, utilizing both English and Creole but also um, wanting to ensure that we worked with our partners like St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority that is now able to revamp and revitalize the mascot Tintin and bring that back in terms of uh, awareness raising with kids. It was so popular with the kids before. So being able to do that and, and get that support from IUCN to help with the revamping of that process and also helping Solid Waste with their uh, public awareness, um, audio visuals and airing and p distribution as well. So that is all, all of this is happening with the, the partnering with the IUCN in terms of implementation. And we are continuing to liaise with them and others um, in terms of implementation under the pillars. We're working, for example, with um, IUCN in terms of the Plastic Waste Free Islands project, which has concluded, but another component's coming on where we're already continuing to work with one of our recyclers that is looking at converting uh, plastic material to, to furniture. 
so trash to treasure so that is something that's also coming up and we're hoping to see uh, the promulgation of that in St. Lucia over time so there's a lot happening in just about every aspect of the pillars and of all the five pillars and and we are we are quite excited in terms of taking it forward wonderful uh, mr tulsi coastal cleaner plan speak to us about the development of that and the engagements that you've had with stakeholders so far yeah thanks um firstly um one may ask why focus on coastal cleanup um and um the the obvious answer is that the marine space is important um, it su supports livelihoods at many levels and um, marine litter, especially plastics, pose a direct threat and a growing threat to the marine environment and the biodiversity that it supports. But coastal waste, the waste found in the coastal areas come from inland. Um, mostly um, it is from waste that is leaked, that, that like I said earlier, is taken by floodwaters into the into the marine space. There are some aspects of marine litter that is from beach activities, that sort of thing, and from boating. So that looking at coastal cleanup and addressing coastal pollution really starts with addressing pollution land. So coastal cleanup is more of a holistic approach um, to 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 managing waste generally. Um, in terms of the, the, the action plan that, that's being developed, um, really um, a lot of organizations conduct these cleanup campaigns. They, they do from time to time. And I think I mentioned earlier, the problem is that you clean up a space and you come back a few months later and you need to clean it again. So part of what we are trying to do is from the cleanup to do an analysis of the waste collected, try to identify the sources, mm -hmm. and then using that data and information to address the sources so that future cleanups will, 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 will be finding less waste. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that is really the, the, the central direction in which we're moving, not just clean up for the obvious benefits, but also to generate that information to inform policy, to identify hotspots and to, and to fashion interventions um, that will address the source rather than clean up, which is addressing the, um, the symptoms of the problem. Okay. And Mr. Nathaniel, um, in addition to stakeholder engagements leading up to the um, clean up plan, um, speak to us about other engagements so far. You touched a little bit uh, on it in our first segment, mm -hmm. but in terms of the development of the PSAs, also we've had the debate championships. Just speak a little mm -hmm. bit about that in trying to spread the word about this activity and get everyone on board. Yes, it is a, a process that's really important in terms of really being able to get the ownership and the buy-in um, in the process. So being able to work with agencies like the Caribbean Youth Environment Network or the National Youth Council and... Um, the dive, the Abaglo Dive Association, and entities such as that, um, because they are the ones who are able to support us in the work that we do. So they engage, for example, in, co in cleanups, so whether the, um, those cleanups be underwater cleanups, like Abaglo Dive Association, and, um, but there are also those who do the cleanups um, on the land or on the beach, etc. So being able to partner with them. We, we also have, and people will be seeing us roll out a number of our uh, documentaries, our public service announcements, our infographics on the various pillars coming up. And we, we want to ensure that this um, gets um, far and wide. We do have the NSI, the National Source Inventory, the ML map itself, the Marine Litter Management Action Plan, available on, on public spaces, Government of St. Lucia website, but also United Nations Environment Program um, have it as well on this site to ensure that persons have that information. We want to ensure that um, that is available. Even in the development of the, of the coastal um, cleanup plan, we were talking about the fact that while it is focused on coastal and the marine, we do recognize that and we designed it in a way that it would still be useful to do anyone doing a cleanup, whether you're doing the cleanup on the land itself or doing the cleanup um, in, in, in the coastal area, in the water, and so, and so on and so forth. And of course, we know everything we do on the land impacts the water. So it's quite relevant um, being able to design it in that way and to make it available. So while we want to do the, we, we can't 
collect data for every single cleanup in St. Lucia. We would have to have a, a system where we've um, itemized or at least identified beaches uh, or areas, um, coastal near shore areas, for example, that are representative around the island and being able to identify those for coordinated, regular, systematic cleanups. That could allow us to collect data in a way that it is useful, it is um, scientific um, to be able to allow us to see the trends and, and what is happening with the data, what is happening with our waste. So, so that is important um, as well. Um, it is also worth noting, um, and just to, to pull to throw that out, that further to the actual um, cleanup campaign plan, that we're also looking at the, the data aspect of things in terms of looking at and enabling a framework that will uh, us allow us to be able to input our data and pull out information for uh, informed decision making that Mr. Toulsey referenced mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually designing the database ourselves in St. Lucia because there are already efforts that are on the way um, regionally, um, globally, that we want to ensure that we, we tag up to in a manner that allows for an even greater coordination on that global scale, mm -hmm. recognizing what uh, waste management is about. We've been talking, for example, about the, the international treaty um, that's looking at um, plastic pollution that is, to be, that is to come into effect in 2024. And that is a global effort, recognition of a problem that is all over the world. So I'm, I'm picking up on a lot of different things in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the short space of time um, that we have. But uh, all of the activities that we have undertaken to date uh, and we will continue to undertake, will seek to involve not just the government, but the civil society, the private sector. We want to involve the media, we want to involve the business places, and, and that is a continuous effort to be able to get the impact that we would like to see. Okay, and around for final words, uh, what can we expect <coughs> coming up next from MLMAP, as well as um, imploring to the general public? <laughs> well, um, I want to go back to um, what the, the, the pillar that deals with information, education, and behavioral change. Because pillar. I believe yep. that of all the pillars, that's the one mm -hmm. that will have the greatest impact. And I, um, behavioral change is, is a scientific process. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not easy to change behavior. And from the research I did to produce this, this work, um, the, there is a sort of a conclusion, a theory, that the greatest driver of behavioral change is economics. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Massey um, reusable bag had attached to it a 25 cents charge for each bag that you take from the supermarket. And, and that is arguably, and it will be interesting to research that, the, the main driver. Um, the, the, um, the Returnable Containers Act, um, uh, I think it has a different name now, um, is probably the way to go so mm -hmm. that um, if our behaviors can change, the problem will go away. And I, I think that some effort, a lot of effort needs to be put in that area. Wonderful. DPN? Uh, <laughs> I would just say quickly, uh, really uh, continuing to call on our partners to continue to work with us, really. Solid Waste Management Authority has been phenomenal in the work that they do. And uh, we have uh, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards in looking at the, the standards of the types of containers that are brought in in terms of, 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 of uh, quality, and that's a, an ongoing process to improve that. Uh, customs and excise in terms of what is brought into the country mm -hmm. and what is uh, not allowed in. And Massey, and, and we have um, entities we notice that, uh, you know, uh, MNC as well, in the single use plastic bags as well. So the, the momentum is growing. So we keep on calling on the various partners out there, those who provide funding in terms of donors like IUCN and UNEP, but those in St. Lucia as well who work with us and partner with us to be able to implement all five of our pillars to really rid St. Lucia of this issue of, of, of waste and, and, and have us disposing of our waste in a manner uh, that is sustainable in keeping with our small island developing state that is very tourism focused. I like yes. how you compacted that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you very much, Mrs. <laughs> Don Pierre Nathaniel and Mr. Tulsi uh, from the Department of Sustainable Development, Mrs. Nathaniel and Mr. Tulsi consulted on the ML map. Uh, this is the latest effort uh, at addressing pollution here in St. Lucia, and we hope that everyone, as she indicated, is uh, partnering, comes on board to support this initiative. Thank you so much for watching. For more information on the ML map, you could go on to the govt.lc, that website, as well as the Department of Sustainable Development St. Lucia Socials, or you can call our office, 468-5863, for more information. My name is Jesse Leons from the Department of Sustainable Development, signing off. Do stay tuned for more NDN programming.